Hello, it's been a while since I last did a recording. Um, so there has been a lot of things happening in the background and that's why I couldn't actually uh, do a proper recording. So basically in today's uh, recording we'll be talking about uh, document understanding. It's mainly about the questions that we have been getting on um, in creating document understanding projects. So uh, we thought of addressing all of these uh, questions in a video. So by taking one by one, so in each video we'll be doing uh, a answering a specific question and likewise we'll be doing a series on this. So uh, this is the first video, so let's look at what our first question is. And in today's one we'll be looking at how to select an OCR engine for document understanding projects because we have a lot of OCR engines so what is the best suitable OCR engine for our specific project what's the way to do that so this one is called OCR benchmarking so let's have a look at it so for different projects we will be having different uh, document structures so depending on your scenario we might come across structured documents, we might come across semi-structured documents or even unstructured documents. And what we need to look at is, before selecting the OCR engine, we need to look at these documents and try to understand what are the different variations we have. So this applies to all the three types, structured, semi-structured and unstructured. So we need to take these separately. Let's say for example, we have a combination of structured and semi-structured documents. So we need to take a look at first the structured documents and see what are the variations we have in these structured documents. Like for example, we could be having computer generated documents and it could be scanned documents and sometimes it could be even images. So identify these different categories or different types as you see in the first uh, part of the diagram and then in each identify how those things are uh, how what are the variations that you see in those specific things like for example if it's a scanned form we can have handwritten data or we could have computer generated data because sometimes some applications allow us to type without really typing on top of a scanned document. So what are those variations? And we just need to identify those things. And then the third level. Once you have that information, then look at how the pages are oriented, whether it's inverted or whether it's not inverted and whether it's in the proper layout. And just see what all these variations you can find because when it comes to documents, there can be many different ways of representing the data and many different ways of presenting that data to us, just like what you see on the screen. So for each type, identify what are the different variations, how the doc uh, data is presented and how the page is presented to us. And once you have that information, go down to the most granular level just like what you see on the screen in the below diagram and capture that as your final set of variations that you see for both, um, for all the types, structured, semi-structured, unstructured, and whatever the types you see in each of those. So once you have that, then is the time to apply the OCR engines on top of this. This also gives you an idea what kind of OCR engines you need to use. Like for example, by looking at this, you, you know that uh, we have handwritten text and we need to have an OCR engine that supports handwritten text. So likewise, you can select the OCR engines that support these kind of scenarios. And then we need to apply the documents and run them through these OCR engines to see what gives the best accurate result. So this is what we call the OCR benchmarking. 
So why do we do this? There are a couple of benefits. First one, by doing this segregation or by doing this analysis, you identify the different variations of the number. So that's the first benefit. The second benefit is by doing this analysis, you identify what are the best OCR engines that support the best extraction and the best accuracy that you can find. So you might come across a question, why can't I use the OCR engine I used in my previous project? That depends. The OCR engine that gave you the best result in the previous project might not be the best option for this one. So that's why we need to perform this uh, benchmarking analysis. So how to perform the benchmark? That's our next question. So once you have all these things, you create another structure, just like what I'm going to show you now. So this is something that I created for our uh, recording purpose. So in my case, I have identified three OCR engines and we have semi-structured documents. So that's the categorization you see here. So the same category that I showed you earlier is shown here in the Excel. And then once we have this category and once we have identified the different OCR engines, then it's time to apply this OCR engine on the different variations we have identified before. And on top of that, we are not just identifying the accuracy of the OCRs in just different variations. We are also looking at specific fields that we would like to extract. So if it's an invoice that we are trying to process, we will need to focus on specific fields like individual fields like invoice number, invoice date, address, and so on. And also we will come across line level information that are presented in a table, like the item code, description, quantity, unit price, and things like that. So have those things in, in your Excel and mention whether it's a regular field or a table field just for easy reference. Once you have that, and once you have this, all the variations identified, get a good number of documents to run it through these OCR engines. So let's say, for example, we have 10 documents from each variation that we know. So for example, if it's an invoice, let's get 10 documents from computer generated type and let's get uh, 10 documents from scanned, but handwritten information and likewise. So having the same number of documentation, documents for each type will help you get a proper accurate result. So it doesn't need to be 10 all the time, but have a good number of documents so you can do a proper analysis. So once you have that, create a small flow and run these documents through these uh, variations or through these OCR engines and check the accuracy level of the data that is extracted and note it down in an Excel sheet like this. So what you see over here is for one specific document from each type. So likewise, what you can do is if you have 10 documents for each variation, note it down for all the 10 documents and see for which documents the OCR engine gives the best accuracy and which OCR gives the best accuracy for which variation. So for example, here, if you look at this, um, this description, um, so you can see, this is an example. When it comes to description, handwritten, inverted, gives us the lowest um, confidence level for this OCR engine. But on the other side, this OCR engine can give us a better result. So this is just an example. This is not uh, showcasing the capabilities of different OCR. This is just applying and showing you how, the, how we can do this analysis. And with that, you can see, if you get an average of these OCR engines, you can actually see which OCR engine gives you the best result for the different variations. 
And in addition, the next, uh, another advantage you get here is you can decide which OCR engines to use. And if there are scenarios like this, where certain fields have a less accuracy or less confidence on that OCR that you select, how can I achieve a better accuracy for those specific fields? You can actually use that secondary OCR that you identified through this analysis in your workflow so that you can write your own validation logic by combining the output of these two or three OCR engines that you are using and get the best, best possible accuracy and the reliability of data. So this is how you do the OCR benchmarking and those are the benefits of doing this. So just remember, always follow this pattern to easily identify the different variations and the best OCR engine for your specific project and the documents that you plan into process. So that brings us to the end of this recording. And if you have any other questions or any concerns regarding the same topic, you can put all those questions in the comment section and we'll be uh, taking up those things as well in the following uh, recordings. So thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in another video. Take care.